ASI has been responsible for the development of this drug, BAN2401, since 2007. And actually, this trial we're talking about started in 2013. At that time, we do not know what the right doses would be for this drug. At the same time, we also understand there are millions of patients and families waiting for treatment for this dreaded disease. And therefore, we created this adaptive trial design, which we want to allocate more subjects, more patients, into the best doses. And that's the genesis behind the study. I think the core of Melissa's question is that, you know, in the United States, we say, you seem to have moved the goalposts. Mm -hmm. Like everybody's got a set of goalposts and this is what you measure right. against, but instead you're measuring over here. Why? Now, let's talk about ADCOMS, which is the endpoint that we're talking about here. ADCOMS is a composite of the key elements of three well-validated traditional measures. Why do we do that? Because these well-validated traditional measures were created to detect improvement in later stages of Alzheimer's disease treatments, such as the one that ASI introduced 20 years ago, Aricept. We understand we want to detect improvements now in earlier stage of Alzheimer's disease patients because we are looking for a disease modifier. Imagine these patients many years later in terms of onset of more severe symptoms. To detect these more milder changes in earlier stages of disease, we have to take out the key elements of these well-validated measures that are sensitive to the earlier stage of Alzheimer's disease, and that's the innovation here with ADCOMS. Well, yesterday, when Lynn Kramer, your head of neurology, I believe, um, presented the data, um, he really claimed victory. He said this was a positive trial. Mm -hmm. This is the first time we've seen results mm -hmm. like this. But then you see the reaction today, and almost universally, analysts are pointing out that genetic imbalance in mm -hmm. the groups. Um, do you think the street is overreacting? Is that an unnecessary uh, concern that people have, or is that a, a legitimate concern? I'm not in a position to comment on uh, other people's opinions, but here at ASI, along with our partner, we are very confident about the robustness of the results that we presented yesterday. Yes, um, these data hot off the press, uh, and we are committed to do additional subgroup analysis to shed a light on this question you just mentioned, and uh, we are very committed to provide clarity as soon as possible because we have confidence. So does that additional analysis, those additional studies, uh, push out the launch of this drug in your view? Definitely not. First of all... Definitely? You say that with 100% certainty? Yes, because we are confident with the robustness of the data. And actually, in any uh, standard statistical analysis, like in this trial, we test the results, we verified the results, against a number of pre-specified factors that's incorporated in the statistical analysis. And APOE4 status is actually a pre-specified factor in the statistical so what's analysis. Next? What's next? What do you do next? Well, we have to take such a groundbreaking data to the regulatory authorities like the FDA to understand the best uh, path forward, what requirements will be there in terms of um, analysis, clinical trials, so that we can bring band 24 to patients as early as possible. Hey there, thanks for checking out CNBC on YouTube. Be sure to subscribe to stay up to date on all of the day's biggest stories. You can also click on any of the videos around me to watch the latest from CNBC. Thanks for watching.